All right, so with this being the last tape, are you looking to push it as you would push any other project or, you know, just let it do what it do? Um, I, I always push every project uh, the most I can. My, I don't have a really far reach right now. Like, so if, if you look at um, Wreck and Ralph on Spotify, I range between like 500 to 1,000 month listeners. If you look at Wreck and Ralph on Instagram, I, I think I have like 600 followers. So like my reach isn't super far, you know? Um, so I always have to put a little bit of money behind it and push it and promote it and stuff. Um, so I'm still gonna do that. Of course I'm gonna do that. I have to treat it just like I would any album. Um, but just uh, something for you, because um, I, I do little podcast interviews and stuff like that, but you're the one who has like the legit, legit shit. So I, I'll give you a little information. Um, this album is done, I'm pushing it as I would. I'm going to keep pushing it as I would. Um, but Reckon's first album is dropping in the first quarter of, of 2021. So within the first three months of 2021, I have another album dropped out under my new moniker. But my reach is completely different with that. Like I've been building Reckon quietly right now because I didn't want any of my followers that I have under Reckon Ralph there yet. I wanted to build up a whole new following, a whole new fan base like from the, from the ground up. And uh, basically, since the last time we started, or the last interview we had, I had like right, just under 100 followers on my new Just Reckon Instagram. And I'm about to hit four, uh, 420 right now. I was laughing because mm. it's 420. Hmm. Um, and my Spotify followers are already matching, if not surpassing, my old Reckon Ralph numbers. And I only have one song out. So to me, like, it's just, it's obvious what the, not only just the name, because a lot of people didn't take me seriously before with the name Reckon Ralph. They didn't take my music seriously and take me seriously. So just looking at the name, I feel like they take me a little bit seriously. Um, you look at my, my picture, my, my shit, I have a new image. I look more professional. Um, the music sounds better. So I, I think with this, I'll have a farther reach as Reckon. And maybe that'll even help me push my old, my old shit a little bit more. Mm -hmm. What can we see on the tape? Well, the album. The the album. Yeah. Um, yeah, you say you're coming with some club the, shit. Um, the new one. Yeah, the new the, one. Under Reckon. Uh, man, bro. Um, I don't want to give away too too much yet, cause I, I like to just kind of work quietly. But um, I'm working with the producers like um, low end frequencies. A lot of people probably don't know him. I, I do that purposely. I don't like to work with people that everybody are working with, but every once in a while I will. Um, I'm working with 36th and Almari. Almari is a producer that a lot of people do work with, so he's one on the opposite side of the spectrum. Like how I said, I work with people who don't. A lot of people don't work with. He has some hits, man. He's getting some placements, so I had to hit Almari for a few beats. And uh, yeah, I got I got some shit, bro. It don't, it don't sound nothing like Wreck and Ralph shit. And at the same time, like on um, the tracks, like I do with 36, it kind of does. Like it kind of sounds like a developed. Wreck and Ralph, kind of like already knowing my style, where I want to be, how I want to sound, and uh, you really get to see my style and, and the just the sound that I built for myself on songs like like Warfare is is a single I'm gonna drop pretty soon. So I guess I got some cool stuff coming up, man. Like I said, uh, Live Ola, Wangadi, uh, Marquise, and that's just the start right now. I'm gonna be working with some more people and stuff, but. How about features? Because, you know, you had a lot of features with, you know, San Antonio, you know, San Antonio. And so are you looking to branch out and, you know, take Wreck into a whole another city? Yeah, that's that's I appreciate you asking that. Actually, that's a good question. Um, I actually want to do a song with the uh, with Velda Wonder. She's out of California. And uh, I've been keeping that my eye out for people out in like New York and stuff like that. Um, my dad's from Chicago. My whole family's from Chicago, and um, my uncle Green was born in Detroit. And uh, surprisingly, a few of my listeners come out from the Chicago area without me even trying at all. I've never tried to push out there or anything. Um, so I'm kind of maybe thinking about looking out into somebody maybe in Chicago who's kind of like in my lane, not too big, but uh, kind of in the same lane, maybe working with them. But yeah, I don't. I don't see myself working with a lot of uh, San Antonio rappers going forward, to be honest. And that's not like um, to be disrespectful or anything like that. It's just I've been doing music business here for 10 years, and I've yet to see anybody aside from somebody who already has their own thing going on, like Live Ola or Big Cree or somebody like that, 
who takes the music as seriously as I do. Like, I take this shit so serious, bro. Like, I wake up doing this shit like this. I sleep in the studio and I wake up in the studio, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't it ain't a hobby or a game to me. Like, it's something I live and I make music off of and I, I provide for my family off of and I plan to keep providing for my family off of, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really see myself working with a lot of San Antonio rappers going forward. Mm-hmm. All right, so you know, let's talk about your most recent video. You got the Recollect video. You know, you show a lot of uh, past schools and shit. Your high school, your middle school. Yeah. Um, what was the message you were trying to portray in that video? Um, that's a song for my Southsiders, for sure. Um, of course, like I, I, I grew up on the south side so I, to me i felt like that was um something i just i just had to do for my south siders if you listen to recollect um kind of like what i touched base on on the last interview i was saying um we grew up listening to like juan Gotti, like luciano dope house records uh, that, that kind of like latin rap so when you hear recollect i kind of wanted to give that kind of same feeling as, as something to leave behind on this last wreck and ralph album so when you hear it you hear that like latin rap influence and then when you see the video you see my upbringing you see i went to columbia heights elementary which is in circle hood if you know where circle hood is on the south side i, I went to leon middle school circle hood you know um i went across the highway to harlandale high school and that's all that's all in the hood and everybody who's uh who's down there and knows me knows I wasn't like the like the most ghetto or super hood nothing like that like I had everything I needed and I say that in the song even you know like I was never thinking poor me nothing like that my grandma tried to keep me out of the streets she gave me everything I needed but uh I mean when when you're when you're living in a certain area you see certain things and you you live in a certain environment and you you, you tend to grow up a certain way and I just wanted to to portray that in the song because a lot of people don't grow up the same way some people grow up like in a sheltered lifestyle or some people grow up with both parents in the household and don't get to really see that side of the story so just kind of really wanted to let people know what it is without them feeling like sorry for me or something like that like it just it is what it is mm -hmm. and in the song you also talk about hanging around the wrong crowd like was that one of your life problems yeah for sure i mean i, I feel like that's something everybody Everybody has a problem with it, but a lot of people won't admit it. You know, like, I mean, everybody has one or two friends that you can, like, be like, man, I probably shouldn't, like, like, why do I hang around that person, you know? But you don't, you don't think about it until you're older. Um, I, I worked on a song with my cousin, actually, when I was saying earlier, who does uh, gospel rap, Christian rap now. And uh, he kind of says something like that on the, on the song I did with him. Um... He says, uh, what do you say, uh, more control when the circle's closed, and you should know, but you probably don't, and have a few you should cut, but you probably won't. Like, to me, that's, to me, that's just, like, that's facts. Like, people people know, like, you, you subconsciously know that, like, this person doesn't benefit you. They're probably bringing you down. You should probably cut them off, but they're your boy, so you're just going to keep hanging with them. And that's, that's facts. And I, honestly, I don't hang around nobody that don't elevate me anymore. Like, if you don't elevate me... We're probably hanging around. Mm -hmm. So when was that point in time for you where you were like, all right, this, I'm going to just, you know, separate from this group of people or this person? It happened by itself, bro. As soon as I started focusing on music and focusing on different stuff, um, even my career is at some point, uh, I, I had a really good job at Wells Fargo as, as a, a mortgage representative, um, handling people's mortgages. Um, I had a really good job. Um, as, a, as a jeweler, I had a really good job as a armored truck driver. So whenever I started focusing on me and my career and my music, people started leaving me alone. So I mean, it's, it wasn't something I had to do or consciously like do at all. But it, you do notice when all your friends that you used to hang around ain't hitting you up no more. And then that's when you kind of consciously make that like, oh shit. And then that's, um, I would say maybe like a couple, just maybe recently, like maybe a year or two ago, I was like, man, you know, like it's crazy. All the people I used to reach out to ain't reaching out to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't make an effort. Mm -hmm. All right. So other than everything that's going on, what else is next for you? As it could be as person, father, what else is next? A lot, bro. Um, anybody that knows me knows I'm always moving. I never stop. 
I never stop. I wake up planning the next move. Um, my artists wake up to, to new music news every day. Uh, Sav and Swizzy Sweets. Um, so the next move really focusing on Reckon's album. It's almost done. Because, <laughs> like I said, I'm, 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 I'm always working like that. So Reckon's album's almost done. I'll be focusing on videos after that, videos and promo, figuring out a release date. And in the meantime, that's when I figure out my guy stuff like Trill Savo and Swizzy Sweets. We're halfway through Trill Savo's album. Uh, we've been shooting videos the whole way. So figure out a release date and some PR for him. And I need some I need some Swizzy Sweets music. My, my artist Swizzy Sweets, we've been making music for like four or five years now. And he ain't got nothing dropped except on my albums. He's features on my shit. I don't think you mentioned shit. him in the last interview. Because he, I don't have too much to talk on about him. Like I do and I don't. I do because he has like two two albums in the works, but they're not finished. You know. So and I, we had a talk yesterday and stuff, and he's he's taking it seriously. Like I had a, had a serious talk with him, and uh, nothing bad or nothing like that. Just like, hey, bro, like you have some heat. Like you have some tracks that are fucking fire, but you want to push the bullshit. Like we can't push the bullshit. You push the fire first, and then you put out whatever you want out later. But uh, they just—they I've always let them have all the creative control, all the creative direction, and I feel like they just need a little bit of creative direction now. Just finishing up, finishing up an album. Because, like I said, some for some pe- some people, and it's again, it's not a shock. Cause I feel like I don't sugarcoat shit. Um, for some people, it's, it's very hard for them to figure out how to finish an album. To just complete something or just finish anything they started at that you know um i've finished 10 albums so my guys know and they and i told them i'm like look i've always let you guys have creative control creative direction so like if i say something don't take it the wrong way just like please like just listen to what i'm saying and they both were like no you're right you're right and they respect what i say because i i've never led them astray so to me that that's the next move focusing on the team because i want us to move as a unit Mm-hmm. What do you what do you think uh, LDT needs to get to the next step? I'm building a team, and like I said, I'm, I always do. I do. I work quietly. Everything I do, I do it quietly. So I'm, I'm quietly building a team of people because everything I've done, I've always done it alone. I've, it's always been me recording, me um, pushing the music, me handling the graphics or whatever I can for the artist, or pushing them to the right videographer or the right photographer or somebody so I'm trying to get all that done in-house now like I'm, I'm putting together a team a, a videographer a photographer um, a publicist like like a full-on record label team because I can't do it all alone bro. Like, and I, I'm realizing that now as things get busy uh, busier bigger as things get uh, more serious it's uh it's crazy because like, I felt like I had more on my plate before like more Um, different areas and I actually have less now but because it's so serious and everything's like so so much bigger it 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 actually feels like more than it was before like I feel like I have so much more going on and more stress than before and on top of that I didn't have a two-year-old daughter before so I have I still have to make time for family and and take care of my wife and my daughter and do what do what I got to do so the the real key to me is just building this team. Building this team, I feel like that that's what LDT needs. All right. So where can we find you at? LivingDreamsToday.com. That's a, I've been building that. That's, I wanted to plug it last time we did the interview, but it wasn't up and running yet, so I didn't, didn't end up plugging it. But LivingDreamsToday.com, tap in there. You'll, see, you'll find all of our social medias. Uh, as soon as you tap in across the top, you'll see all the LDT so, social medias. And if you click About, You'll see a biography about me, a biography about Trill Savile. I'm working on one for Swizzy Sweets. And when you hit those about us, our, um, our social media links are there as well. But uh, if you want to find me, you can find me at Just Reckon on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You just type in the at symbol, J-U-S-T, Reckon, with, Reckon without the G, and you'll find me. All right, Reckon.